You know, for a watch that hasn't even gone into production, the Mandela has gathered quite a following among reviewers, even to the point that one awarded it the watch of the year. So I was quite eager to see it for myself. And I gotta say that with its sleek, complex, and utterly unique design, it's really no surprise that this sports watch has gathered quite a following. But I think in order to fully understand this one, you have to take a step back and take a look at Second Hour Watch's first offering, which was the Gin Clear Diver. Now, these two watches couldn't be more different in terms of style, design, and feel. Yet with the Gin Clear, you got a small glimpse of Second Hour's love of complex geometric design, one that Second Hour's owner Peter has now brought to full fruition with the Mandala. Now, after reviewing the Gin Clear last year, I loved it enough that I jumped on the Kickstarter to get one of my own. So when Peter asked if I wanted to borrow a Mandala to review, it was an easy yes. Now, fair warning that this is a prototype, and there may be some differences in the final version. And from what I know, the Kickstarter will be launching on March 18th. But for now, let's take a closer look and see if it's going to be worth it. In terms of size, you're looking at a 40mm wide watch without, and just under 43mm with the crown. There's also a rather short lug to lug here of 45 and a half, and it's only 10.7mm tall with both its crystal and exhibition case back. Uh, so in terms of a platform, I think this is going to be a great fit for most people. Even if you prefer sub 40mm watches, that shorter lug to lug makes the watch feel just a little bit smaller on the wrist. And with its bracelet, I found it to be perfectly balanced and extremely comfortable on my own 7-inch wrist. It's also very lightweight at 128 grams with its bracelet, so it's easily a watch that blends into your wrist and you can forget you're wearing. Yet despite all of that, it should also be fairly durable, as a sports watch should. Not only does it have 100 meters of water resistance with its signed screw-down crown, but there's an extra scratch-resistant coating to help keep it looking new. The case has a very sleek and slender look to it, with these narrow and pointed lugs protruding out, which stylistically also seem to match the crown guards, giving the case a more symmetric feel. The case itself has a linear brushing on the top and the sides, guiding your eyes up and down its entire length, while two very narrow polished chamfered edges sit on each side, one sitting above and below the brush section, which I think helps maintain that sleek appearance. The clean bezel is split into two parts. The base has a circular brushing, while the top is polished, bringing focus to the crystal and the dial. The crystal is a flat sapphire, but there is a beveled edge to it as the entire thing just rises slightly out of the bezel, which winds up adding just a small amount of distortion to the outer edge of the dial, right where the minute indicators lie. On the rear of the case, you have an exhibition case back with an additional sapphire. The exhibition case back is a nice touch, but for the most part, it's not essential. As much as I like Miyota 9000 movements, they aren't the most interesting to look at, even with a custom rotor. But even with that case back, the watch is under 11mm tall, so it's not taking anything away, and you might as well have it. Now, let's go back to the front to the signed screw down crown. And it is a small thing, but I'm pretty impressed with the logo on the crown. For such a small space, they did a great job, as it actually seems like it has a lot of depth. The crown itself is not very big, and it barely sticks out from the crown guards. But with its flat side and the terrific knurling, it's always easy to get a hold of and unscrew. Yet, I think that aggressive knurling might clash just a touch with the rather elegant looking dial. And if this was a pure dress watch, that could be a problem. But we are talking about a sports watch here. Now, while the case is nicely done, it's the dial where things really get interesting. As far as different colorways, Second Hour is going to be offering six different options, which might be a bit ambitious for a Kickstarter, but it does show off their creativity. For me personally, if I decide to jump on board this, I think I'm going to go for this one or maybe the dark blue one. Now, the dial is divided into two sections the center section which is more dressy, and the extended, sort of double-edged chapter ring which is more sporty. The center section is where the watch gets its name, with its very intricate and textured geometric pattern. It's complex and captivating to look at. Now just beyond that, the jet black flattens out with a glossy appearance to form a circular which contains the applied indices. With this version, they are gold wedges filled with white luminous paint all of which are pointing towards that center pattern. 
Now, in keeping with second hour's design language, the indexes at the 12, 4, and 8 are just slightly wider and just slightly longer. It's kind of a small change from the traditional four-point crosshair effect, and you wind up dividing your day by three rather than four. But the small change is one thing that I really loved about the Gin Clear, and I think it's become a staple of second hour's designs. Now, moving beyond that, we have the chapter ring, and that's where things get a bit more casual. The first part is in white, which not only offers a clear contrast to, but also frames that center section. That first section is angled around the dial and contains a rather detailed half train track, before it then levels off to a glossy black containing minute indices, as well as one of the most interesting features of the watch, which are these long extended indices at the 12, 4, and 8. Now these do correspond to the indices on the center section, but they're higher up and they extend out almost hanging in midair above them. It's rather unusual, but also very intriguing. The only part I really don't like about the chapter ring are these painted squares. They just seem kind of out of place considering the complex patterns on the rest of the dial. Now equally intriguing is the unique custom handset that was chosen for the watch. They're basically gold sword hands with white luminous paint, and in that way they do match the indices, as well as a red tipped arrow second hand, or just a touch of color against the black backdrop. Yet for the hour and minute hands, the tips have been carved out, creating sort of a two-pronged pitchfork. It's very cool, very different, and very effective, as they're not only easy to use, but creating that little bit of negative space keeps the hands from entirely blocking the dial design underneath, and keeping much of the symmetry intact, which second hour also accomplished by choosing to avoid a date. Normally I prefer to have a date on a watch I wear every day, but I'm not sure how one would really look here. There's a lot going on, and it'd be hard to put one in here and not break up that symmetry. I'm also a big fan of the minimal amount of text, with just the model name at the bottom and the logo at the top, keeping it simple, clear, and avoiding any distractions from the overall design. You know, in some ways the Mandela reminds me what Matthew and Sons was trying to do with the JCB, which was to create a sports watch that could easily be used as a dress watch, yet still look casual enough for everyday use. And to that extent, I think they both succeeded nicely, but they took very different approaches. Rather than mixing the various elements together, the Mandela separates them out, keeping the more business side up front and dead center and regulating the casual part to the edges yet still bringing those two parts together with a consistent color scheme and those extended larger indices. For some, this may be way too busy a design, yet I find myself consistently attracted to the complexity. The different textures, shapes, and heights of the various elements create a very visually interesting and complex design, one with a lot of depth and one that seems to draw your eyes in, almost as you try to decipher a deeper meaning. At this point, I only have one major issue with the Mandala, and hopefully it's an issue that's only isolated to this prototype. Some of you may have already noticed a lot of the scratches and marks on the metallic surfaces on the dial. Now, in person, with the naked eye, these are barely visible. But with a macro lens, these are very obvious, and it's something that can't continue into the final production. Now, with regard to Loom, Second Hour did a good job here as well. First off, I really love the design with those secondary outer indices. It just gives it a very unique loom profile. Yet where it really counts when it comes to loom is longevity. Now, you know I always prefer more and more loom, but for a sports watch, this is pretty good. Lasting longer than a Vostok Amphibia and fading out just before a Seiko Turtle. Although I would have loved it if it lasted just a little bit longer and as long as the Gin Clear Diver. As for the movement, you're looking at a Miyota 9039, which is basically a slightly thinner, non-date version of a 9015, which is a perfect choice here. Not only does it help it keep it relatively affordable compared to Swiss options, but also relatively thin, which is important when you consider the height that this multi-layer complex dial requires. Now, as for the bracelet, it is pretty good as well. You have solid end links, solid screwed end links, and a milled clasp, it just has a really solid, well-made feel to it in the hand. Yet its thinner links, as well as its fully articulating nine-link design, give it a different look, as well as it lets it easily and comfortably conform to your wrist. So, very well done, and it's a bracelet that I would easily keep on the watch. 
Now, value for any Kickstarter watch is always tricky, as you're always getting a better deal if you jump in on the Kickstarter, and there may be different pricing tiers during it as well. From what I know, full retail is going to be $560, and during the Kickstarter, it's going to be starting about $420. That said, I think $420 is a pretty good price, especially considering everything you're getting, and compared to some other watches with the Miyota 9039 I've seen. The Mandala has a fantastic and unique design. One that strikes a great balance between casual and dressy, yet it's still tough and durable enough for everyday life. And that combination might make it the perfect sports watch for some out there. After spending some time with it, I'm not really surprised a lot of reviewers have been taken with it, as it's a watch that checks off all the right boxes when it comes to specs and build quality, but has a very different look and design from the watches we normally look at. Although as different as it is, for me, there's something very familiar about it. And I think one of the reasons I like it is that there are various aspects of it that remind me of some of the other watches that I really like, all wrapped up in one little package, such as a complex central geometric pattern like the Vario Empire, or a sleek thin case and complex bracelet like the Zealous Nova, as well as a similar spec and feel on the wrist as the Traska Summiter. So with that in mind, it'd actually be surprising if I didn't like it. However, while I'm enthralled with it, and I believe the Kickstarter will do rather well, I have to acknowledge that I think some will be turned off by its complex and unique design. Those that are a bit more traditionalist, and like a more straightforward and cleaner look. For them, I just think there's way too much going on here. But where do you stand in all of this? Let me know down below what you think of the Mandala, or if you'd be more interested in their follow-up compressor-style diver, the Giant Stride. Let me know that as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time.